Hi friends, in this session we study about the types of functions. In the last session, we have studied about the constant function, identity function, and modulus function. In this session, we will study about the greatest integer function, which is also called floor function, the smallest integer function, which is also called ceiling function, and finally, the fractional part function. So, let us start with greatest integer function, which is also called the floor function, as I explained earlier. First, I would like to define for any real number x, we use the symbol greatest integer of x or the floor of x to denote the greatest integer less than or equal to x. In other words, we could say that the function f such that r to r defined by f of x is equal to floor of x for all x belongs to r. So, I would like to explain with an example, one of the example we are taking. If you have to find out the greatest integer function of three point seven five, so it would be three. The greatest integer function before uh, or less than this uh, number is three. If you have to find out the greatest integer function of three point zero one, it would be three. If you have to find out the greatest integer function of three it would be 3. Now, the similarly, if I have to find out the greatest integer function of 2.71, it would be 2. And if we have to find out the greatest integer function of 0 0.32, it would be 0. Now, if you have to find out the negative of any number minus 2.72. So, we will get here minus 3 because the greatest integer before minus 2.7272 is minus 3. So, in this way we could get the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Here it is equal to x, it is less than x, it is less than x, it is less than x. So, in this way we could find out the greatest integer. Now, how we plot this on graph? We know that if we have a number 3.99 uh, we have to find out the greatest integer of this, it would be 3 and up to 3, 3 to 3.99 we get always 3. So, 3.99 if you have a number, 3.99 on this number line except 4, so we will write, we will put in this way and we get 3. This is the uh, 3 to 3.99 we get always 3 and if you have 2.99 we get 2 and up to 2 to 2.99 we get 2 there. Here if I have 1.99 to 1 we will get here if you have 0.99 something 0.99 and so on, so we get 0. So, here in this way we get these numbers, but also if we have uh, minus 0 0.01 and this all and up to we get minus 1 here. So, similarly we get here. In this way, we get the graph of this. If we have minus 2.99, so we get here minus 3, and we have 1, 2.01 minus 2.0001 to minus 2 minus 3, we get always 3 minus 3. So, in this way, we plot this graph. Uh, it's very easy to draw. Uh, if you have minus 3.01001, that minus 3 is not included, and up to you will get minus 4. Minus 4, there is minus 4 also. So, this is the graph of 
uh, greater than integer function. Now we see how we get the domain range of this. Uh, here you see in this graph that the domain 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 is r the any number you can put instead of x uh, 2.9 2.7 2 minus 2 3 11 any number so domain is r we have the real number but the range if you ever study about the range so range uh, uh, we get only integers here we get you see here 3 we are getting 2 0 minus 3 we are not getting any fractional number here the any decimal form number so we are getting only integers so the range is j range is j so in this way we could find out the domain range of this uh, uh, greatest integer function now we study about the smallest integer function it is just uh, opposite of that uh, greatest integer function uh, where we take the smaller than or equal to x here we get the greater than or equal to x uh, the smallest integer so first i would like to explain uh, the smallest integer function is also called the ceiling function for any real number x we use the symbol uh, ceiling of x to denote the smallest uh, integer greater than or equal to x in other words, we could say that the function f such that r to r defined by f of x is equal to ceiling of x for x for all x belongs to r. So here I would like to explain. Uh, if you have a number like this, three point four. So we get the greater than or equal to x. So this is our x three point four. The greater than or equal to Oh, this the smallest integer would be 4 so we get here 4 in this uh, greatest integer we get 3 here we get one more, more than that uh, and if I had to find out uh, 3.96 we again get 4 if I had to get uh, sorry if I had to get uh, 0.96 so we get here one get here one if we have to get uh, minus 0 0.2 so we get here 0 and this way we get the number if we have minus 2.96 we get here minus Two, because the greatest in, uh, greater than this integer is minus 2. So if we plot this on this graph, we see if we have 4. So the ceiling of 4 is 4. Okay. So for this now we explain this here. If we have a number 3, we get 3. For 3 we get 3 so except 3 3 point something is there 3.01 3.02 or 3.99 whatever the number is there up to 4 you will get 4 so we get in this way the opposite of that graph if we have 2.01 up to 3 we get 3 here if we have 1.00001 except 1 the greater than 1 then we get 2 here up to 2 and here also if we get 0 point something we get here 1 but similarly in the negative side if we have minus 1 uh, 0 point uh, Nine 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 something like that minus a negative so we get zero up to zero. The similar thing here also we get the things similar way. Uh, so in this way we get this graph. Now we find out the domain range of this. Uh, we know that the domain of this is. 
domain is r we are putting any number we can put any number instead of x here the decimal or the integer the average number the rest of the y again so it is r but the range if we talk about the range in the range we get the integers here also as we have uh, got in data integer functions so the range is j it is an integer we get all the integer so this is the smallest integer function uh, which is the ceiling function also Now we study what the fractional part function. First, I would like to define this. For any real number x, we use the symbol uh, fractional part function of x in this way. That the curly bracket we put down there to denote the fractional part of the decimal part of x. In other words, we could say that the function f such that r to r defined by f of x is equal to fractional part function of x for all x belongs to r. So I would like to explain this that the fractional part we have to write whatever the number we have, we have just put down the fractional part. So I explain you here if we have three point seven five. Oh, uh, we have to find out the fractional part function. It is a fractional part function, so we get the value of the fractional part only, the decimal part, point seven five. The integers we have to ignore here. If you have Minus three point seven five, you will get again zero point seven five only. It will be positive always, not be negative, not minus zero point seven five. If we have two point seven five, you will again get zero point seven five. In this way, if you have any number, if you have zero point three nine, zero zero point nine nine, so you will get here zero point nine nine. If you have here Any number, uh, like uh, any integer, like minus seven. So you will get here zero because the fractional part is zero. Here. So any integer, if you have, you will get zero. If any number point nine nine, you will get the uh, that uh, fractional part only point nine nine. So here, if we draw the graph of this function, we get in this way. If you have minus one, if you have minus one, so we get uh, minus one point nine nine minus one point zero one. So we get always the fractional part, which would be always between zero and one on y-axis. So from here to here, whatever you have, you will get between zero and one. If um, point nine, you will get point nine, point eight, you will get point eight. So in this way, you get the graph like this. This is our graph we are getting. The one will not be involved here. So similarly, we will get here also. Mm, just a moment. Uh, Use new tool for this. So we are getting this one. In this way, we are getting this. Here also, we get the same thing. Yeah. This sort of graph, graph we will get here. Here also. Get the same thing here. Also, we get the same thing here. Also, we get the same thing. So in this way, we get this sort of graph uh, for facts the part. Now I would like to explain what the domain range of this. So let us see what will be the domain and range for this. So the domain domain is R here. Because we know that we could any we could put any number here instead of x in this curly bracket, any real number. But about the range, range we are getting the fractional part, fractional part which is positive always between zero and one. It may be zero also, zero to one. It uh, want to be one, less than one always. So we could write the range. 
which is 0 is included here and 1 is not included. So it is semi open bracket 0 to 1. So this is a way, other way we could write this 0 is smaller than equal to y is smaller than 1. So this is our range for this 0 to 1 always forward. So this we have seen in this uh, session we have studied that the, what is greatest integer function, what is smallest greater, uh, uh, smallest integer function and what is fractional part and their domain in range. We have studied about their graph also. In the next session we would study some other functions uh, like uh, signum function, exponential function, logarithmic function and reciprocal function. Thank you.